develop more and more technology uh, in our society, there are more and more things that go on that people don't know about. Uh, bad guys, we think, are just around and the police, uh, you know, capture those folks, uh, hopefully. But we don't realize sometimes that because of our technology now, that several of these bad things that go on are now going on in that technology, more specifically in the internet, correct? That's right, absolutely. And a big problem that we see is the integration of that technology with the internet and the predatory habits of child predators, um, but not so much as a vulnerability there, but also children endangering themselves with the technology. Right, right. And you know, many times going to the wrong sites, the wrong places. And you know, I, I think uh, as a parent, Dave, both of us parents, mm -hmm. um, we worry about where our young people go many times on the internet. Um, I, I know in talking before we started our show today, uh, we talked about different places um, or, or different tools even that parents could use to kind of uh, check, uh, we won't want to say spy on, <laughs> our, uh, on our young people, but to check on them, see where they're going and make sure that they're not on the, the wrong place. How, how do we do that? Well, Price, that's a very big concern for parents, and that is, where are my children going on the internet? And it's a legitimate question to want to ask, sure. but then you want to do it in such a way that you're, you don't want to feel like you're, you're eavesdropping on your child, or you don't want them to feel like you're, you're spying on them. And my, I don't know, I've told Megan for years I'm spying on her all the time. Even though she's at Western, I'm spying on her all she's the time. She's still doing yeah. it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always tell my daughter, Casey, that, you know, she has to uh, be careful where she goes because Daddy can tell where she's <laughs> been on the Internet. But, you know, I think it's important, though, that that line of communications be there, um, especially with your minor children, that you tell them that, look, the Internet is something that is there for you to do your school research on, to, right. to talk to your friends. But you have to understand that, there, that it is a dangerous place. Sure. Um, and that you have to tell them that you're going to be watching where they're going, not so much to be critical of what they're doing, but to make sure they stay safe. It's almost like holding your child's hand when you cross the street. Sure. I'm going to hold your hand as you go down the highway of the, you know, the super highway here. So there are some things that you can do as parents. One would be just talk to your children, number one. Make sure you tell them, this is what I'm going to do. If you're going to have an email account, and of course, depending on their age, I, I, I would assume the younger they are, um, you, you have to make a decision as a parent how young you want them to be to have an email account. Just uh, like anything else we do, we've got to right. set up rules and guidelines. Absolutely. And make sure those rules and guidelines are written. Make sure you write them down. Make sure you tell your child that, you know, this is the expectation and this is what we're looking for within with that expectation and Ooh, write it down. A, a signed contract? Right. Okay. It's, a, it's an internet safety contract and you can find those on our website. We actually have uh, a safety contract out there you can download from our website. It's a just kind of a little template. And since you've mm -hmm. said that, Dave, let's talk, let, let, we're going to show your all's website mm -hmm. um, on the screen right now, but uh, go ahead and tell us what that website is, if you would. The website is www.usict.org, and it's a fairly easy uh, domain to remember. And there's all kinds of information out there, uh, sa parent safety brochures you can download, some that we've uh, linked from the Department of Justice and, and collaborated in one kind of collection place. But we've mentioned about internet safety and tools and, and talking to our children, that's one thing. Um, keeping the computer in a centralized location in the home is, is somewhat important. I've seen a lot of trends where kids will have their own laptops now, um, their own iPhones and iPads. and. Uh, uh, different kinds of network devices like their cell phones that can get on the internet and pretty pretty good browsing capabilities with them. So they'll disappear and they'll, they'll migrate off to their bedroom or they'll group together in, 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 the, in the family room or something and that you don't know what they're doing. But it's, if you've got a computer in the home, I recommend it be in a central area of the home where people walk past. So you can kind of just casually look without shoulder surfing your child's behavior. But if you see something on the screen, you might ask them, you know, did you go there on purpose or was that an accident? Mm -hmm. um, if they're switching the screen really fast when you walk in the room, that's a problem. You want to you wanna talk to your child about that. And I would say always ask first, you know, because you want to build that trust level with your child because the more you, you snoop behind their back, the less trust that builds in the family unit. 
And I think that's very important that you can establish that with your child up front. But we can't, Correct. you know, we have so many latchkey kids mm -hmm. nowadays and uh, kids, uh, young people are on the computer when we may not be around. Yeah, and let me talk about that. I had that problem uh, actually in my home, not maliciously, but I just didn't feel comfortable with children being on the internet when I wasn't home. Um, one of the things that you can do is if you have high-speed internet, like a DSL uh, modem or a cable modem of that nature, you'll have a, a router or a firewall router. Sometimes they're wireless, they have little antennas on them. You can go into those routers as, as an administrator. There's instructions on the, 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 um, the manuals that come with them to how to get in there and manage that, but you can set access control limits for the times that the internet's available. Ooh. So you can go in and say, well, I, I want the internet to only work between uh, the hours of 5 p.m. and 10 p.m., Monday through Friday, uh, we restricted from anything beyond that, and then on the weekends we'll leave it open. So you can set restriction timelines in the router to be able to do that. That's a little bit more of an advanced thing to do, uh, but there are some things that you can do to, to help restrict the access there. Another way to do it is uh, we had in our home a cellular modem. It was a little USB cellular card you can get from Sprint, AT&T, wherever and they plug into the router and they provide broadband internet in the home through a wireless access, but when I'm not home, I unplug it and take it with me. So there's just no internet there at all. So that was one way that we would do it uh, for a while, and then I actually went to a higher speed, because it's, it's not quite as fast as right. a cable modem. Um, but now let's say there are in, they are in the internet and you need to check where they're going, they're not being truthful, maybe they're not being they're not lying, but they're not being fully truthful to you. Or they're switching that screen like you were or talking about. Or popping that back and forth. Walk by. Some of the tools that I would recommend, um, there are free downloads. There's one called um, IE for Internet Explorer History Viewer. So it's IEHV, and you can Google that. And it's a free download, and when you download that, you run it. And it will go out and look at your browser and pull back all of the sites that computer has ever been on. Now, can you give that to us one more time? And sure. I know we'll put it's that at the bottom of the screen. You Google IEHV, and that'll be a shortcut for Internet Explorer History Viewer. That's just one tool uh, that's free that you can download to view um, where the history is on the computer. And we're all about free. And we're all about free. In today's economy, that's right. That's right. And it's a good forensic tool to, to have in the home toolkit. Um, there are higher level versions of that that can go beyond if they just delete their browser history that can actually go in and get that stuff too but now let me ask you something can young people will they know that's there i mean is there any way that uh, us parents can put that on there without them knowing that it's there actually it's a standalone program that you can put in a folder someplace and just run it anytime it's not an active monitoring um, program. In other words, it doesn't stay resident and watch. Right. There are some tools that you can download, some, some filtering programs that you can purchase. They range from $20 to $30 all the way up to $100, but they can prevent your child from disclosing certain information you put in the file in the configuration like your home address, phone number, credit card numbers. Um, so you can prevent that information from just being transmitted over the internet with these filtering programs. They also watch for inappropriate content, chatting, uh, and that kind of thing. So there, and those are pay programs you can just download. They're almost like an antivirus program, but more geared towards child protection online. So they're pretty good. Um, one of the things that I've seen too in the home is a lot of people have wireless internet in the house. Right. Uh, Wi-Fi is right. the acronym for it. But what I've seen a lot in my patrolling, uh, of course we have laptops in our cars, as sure. you know, and they have wireless internet on them. And they're constantly popping up with this as a wireless access point and this is one and we're driving through our neighborhoods and and we'll see one pop up and another obviously you know our computers are, are wide open trying to you know connect back to our wireless through the city network but what I've seen though is if you notice a little padlock will be next to some and there won't be a padlock next to others and the ones that don't have a padlock indicate that anybody with a laptop or a cell phone or an, an iPad can connect to that person's internet and here's where the problem steps in. Your child may not have access to the internet at home, but your neighbor may have wireless internet at home, and he or she is not protecting or blocking that internet with a security password so they can just attach their laptop to your neighbor's internet. Now you've lo you lose all of your tracking capability of where they're going because some routers actually have router tables that track history as well, and you can enable that in your router. 
And so you better be watching if they walk mm -hmm. out the door with the computer under their arm saying, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm just going to go for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there's another problem that that brings.